Okay, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to the fifth lecture in Introduction to Stable Homotopy Theory. And finally, we will start talking about Stable Homotopy Theory. I'm sure it is a relief for every one of you. Uh, it is certainly for me. So, okay, let me quickly remember a bit the characters that will, be, will appear today. So we're going to have this space is going to be the infinity category of spaces. And remember, we formally defined it as the uh, coherent nerve of the category of Kahn complexes, but that's, that the precise definition is not really important for today. Um, and it is, uh, um, it is uh, going to be for, uh, well, the intuition you should have, you know, objects are spaces, maps are continuous maps, homotopies are homotopies, and so on and so forth, as you expect. Sorry, when I say space, I mean space is homotopy equivalent to CW complexes. And important is will be also the infinity category of pointed spaces, which, for example, you can define as the coherent nerve of pointed can complexes, which are can complexes with the distinguished points and maps that preserve them the distinguished point. There are other ways of defining it, but that's not important. And remember, important thing that we discussed a bit last time, the homotopy category of spaces, which happens when you identify homotopic morphisms, is the same thing as the uh, homotopy category of pointed spaces, well, of pointed CW complexes. that we discussed, that you, we discussed uh, last year or whenever you have studied uh, algebraic topology. Okay. Uh, so important facts that we're going to need, an important fact is mm, uh, the important fact is uh, spaces, pointed spaces uh, can be generated And their co-limits by um, spheres. When I write Sn, you can uh, well choose whichever model you want for the homotopy type of Sn. It can actually give you an explicit can complex model, but that's sort of besides the point. So what what does this mean? It means essentially you can think of these as every space has a pointed space has a cell structure. Uh, you can think of it, I don't know, every space X can be written as the co-limit of its skeleton. Well, let's see, let's do and skeleton. And for example, you can realize the uh, M plus one skeleton by taking the, the, this homotopy push out by attaching a bunch of cells. You might have seen these as taking the wedge of a bunch of disks, but of course up to homotopy, uh, this makes no difference because a wedge of disks is just contractible. And I'm sort of going to stop to distinguish between homotopy equivalent spaces now. Uh, since now we have all the technology that allows us to treat them as interchangeable. Okay. Uh, this shouldn't be a surprise for anyone, but uh, do we have questions about this? Okay, if you don't, let me introduce the... Oh, let me first, I, an admonition I should have given last time. Uh, a cofiber sequence that I'm going to write as X prime goes to X goes to X double prime is just a homotopy, well, 
I said I wouldn't use homotopy anymore, a push out diagram. X prime goes to X, goes to X double prime, goes to the point. So um, concretely, this means that you have two maps, F and G. So concretely, we have F, G maps, H, uh, homotopy of GF with the constant map at the point. Uh, and uh, uh, which is universal. And if you remember uh, last, last semester, we saw that these IE, uh, G and H identify X double prime with the mapping cone. of f and the mapping cone of f i will often we will often write right the mapping cone of f as cough x uh, sorry cough f or x mod x prime uh, because you remember, when f is a co-fibration in, in topological spaces, this is equivalent to x mod x prime. We saw this last semester. Uh, also, we don't we won't need it just to motivate the notation. Or sometimes, well, sometimes also cf, but I'm going to use it with less often. Okay. Questions? No? Okay, so it's time to actually start, finally, uh, with, with uh, the main definition for today. Uh, this is not the most general definition I can give, but it turns out to be equivalent. It's going to be an exercise uh, in the next week exercise sheet that is equivalent to the more general thing you might want to give. But let's, let's work with this for today. So our cohomology theory is a pair the upper star delta where so delta the upper star uh, is a map from the homotopy category of pointed spaces up into graded abelian groups let me spell out what this is graded abelian groups and delta from uh, is a natural is a natural isomorphism E star con with E star shifted composed by sigma. Where sigma is the suspension. Remember, suspension, we saw it as a functor from pointed spaces to pointed spaces, but of course, it induces a functor in the homotopy category. So this makes sense. Uh, this might or might not be uh, the definition you've seen. Before, oh wait, I didn't tell you the property of those. So, uh, such that, so we have two properties. Um, for any collection of pointed spaces, X alpha, the map, so we have a map, yeah, the star of the wedge. Remember, the wedge is the co-product to the product. Okay. Is an isomorphism. And uh, a 
tiny bit of warning, the product on the right hand side is the product in graded abelian groups. So it means that in, in every degree you take the product. So it's not, it's not uh, if you see an abelian group, uh, a great abelian group as the sum of its homogeneous parts, this is not literally the product of those. You get, when A is infinite, you get a different thing. So if you, if you prefer, you can put this condition by replacing star with N for every integer N. Okay, that's one condition that's not particularly interesting. The most interesting one. Uh, oh, but uh, let me also notice that when A is empty, this tells you that E star of the point is zero. That's a special case of this condition, but let me spell it out explicitly. Uh, because we're going to need it to state the second one. So for every Cofiber sequence. Which remember is given by X prime F G X double prime and a homotopy H and all homotopy of GF with the point. The the sequence the upper star of X double prime G upper star star of x to e upper star of x prime is exact in the middle. Okay. So these are the two conditions. There shouldn't be a surprise. You should have seen at least one example of this before and let me actually give you this example. So example, let uh, uh, M be an abelian group. Then X goes to the reduced homology, homology of X with the coefficient of X, uh, equipped with uh, the suspension isomorphism. is a cohomology theory. And you should have seen both properties. And note that I am actually hiding a third property in the definition, which is homotopy invariance, since it is a functor out of the homotopy category. And that's the same thing as it's saying it sends uh, homotopic morphisms to the same morphism. It's, it's more convenient to hide it there in the source category, but in fact, I could have secretly not put this H and ask a functor from the infinity category since the target is a one category, so it's forced to identify homotopic morphisms anyway. But let me be explicit for now. Okay. Um, is this definition clear? Okay, our goal today is going to be no less than to describe all possible cohomology theories. Uh, in order to do so, first let us see a bit of the consequences of this definition, what kind of structure we're going to have in this cohomology theory. So first, recall from, from, uh, from last semester, you have a cofiber sequence Uh, then there is a canonically chosen cofiber sequence here. So we can shift things. And actually, let me give you, a, we saw this last semester, but let me give you a short argument. So we have a homotopy push out diagram here. Uh, we can consider this push out here with 
uh, no, sorry, this push out here with whatever this push out is. And if you look at the big diagram, though, it is also a homotopy push out diagram. The big square is also a push out square. So this forces the question mark to just be the suspension of X prime. And then the second square is the square uh, we, it's the cofiber sequence we wanted. And of course you can iterate this. We get, for example, X double prime, sigma X, um, and here you see that what you get here is sigma f possibly with a minus depends exactly which conventions you work with but I'm not going to pay a ton of attention to the signs for now and then we go the signs are important in other circumstances but you can always ooh, sorry choose them coherently etc So this sometimes it's called the rotating cofiber sequences or exact sequences, but it's, ba it's a very basic and simple thing. You can actually think it geometrically. If you take X double prime being a, map a mapping cone and you are collab and you're attaching a cone on, on, on this X here, what you get you can see immediately that it's equivalent to the suspension of X prime by collapsing this cone here, that's whose inclusion is a cofibration. I think we discussed this last semester. Um, if not, maybe spend some time drawing pictures until you convince yourself that this actually makes sense. Uh, So that's uh, X double prime. Oh, so sorry, let me actually show the thesis. Let me actually use colors. So maybe it's good. So this is X prime, this is X, this is a cone on X. And this whole thing is X double prime over X. So this is the suspension of X prime is indeed X double prime over X. Of course, these, this pasting here, it's also a sufficient proof, but maybe familiarizing oneself with the, with the pictures that you can draw is also helpful to keep this concrete. Okay. But, okay, what can we do with this, with these uh, rotating fiber sequences? Well, no, if E star D, is a cohomology theory. We know uh, that you have, for example, E n of x prime, uh, x double prime, sorry, goes to E n of x goes to E n of x prime, and this is just g up a star, and f up a star. Oh, and I'm doing this. Sorry, I'm doing this wrong. Okay, that's an exact sequence in the middle, but this coming from X prime goes to X goes to X double prime, but we also have this thing here, which I'm going to write like this, um, X, uh, X, still with G upper star, X and double prime, and then I have this weird that I call the upper star from E n of sigma X prime. This is the same, and remember we have our suspension isomorphism with E n minus one X prime. And you can actually go further, take X double prime goes to Sigma X prime goes to Sigma X. And here 
Well, let me just write what the result is. You get n minus one x prime. And here you get an n minus one x. And all these sequences are exact. Um, so pasting all of these together, we get a long exact sequence. EM minus one uh, X prime goes to EM two. EM minus one X, sorry. EM minus one X prime, EM of X double prime, EM of X, EM of X prime, EM plus one of X double prime, etc. So even if uh, our, our hypothesis gives us only a, a sequence exact in the middle, we can use the suspension isomorphism to patch them together and get an actual long exact sequence. And let me give names actually. So we have G upper star, F upper star, and then to call them Delta upper star, these guys. Um, uh, F of the star again. G of the star. G of the star. And these shouldn't be a particular surprise for you. And moreover, a little piece of notation. I'm going to write en of x comma a when a is well, say a subspace of x. Write them in the other order, actually. This is just going to be defined as the n of the mapping cone. And you, we, we gave it an exercise, I think, twice uh, that this recovers the classical notion of relative homology um, in the example that we saw. I'm tempted to give it for the third time, but I think this might be overselling the point. Uh, so the long exact sequence, so for, for the inclusion, so for the cofiber sequence, a x goes to x mod a, the long exact sequence above is the less of a pair. Okay. And it's actually the one for reduced cohomology. You can also define unreduced cohomology uh, by take in, in by adding a disjoint base point, but I think I'm always going to work with the equivalent of reduced cohomology at least for today. Okay. Let me pause for one second and ask if there are any questions. Excuse me, maybe a dumb question, but uh, could you quickly recall uh, the this suspension isomorphism you were talking about before? I mean, the special isomorphism is part of the data in, in for a general cohomology theory. It's just telling you that the cohomology of a suspension. If you want. Ah, to okay. Thank you. Yes. And uh, uh, it is. Uh, it was a theorem that I think you did in algebraic topology one that such a thing is there for uh, for ordinary cohomology. If you haven't seen it before, the idea is to use the meyer vietori sequence for the, so it is the, the, the suspension, right? And you can use the meyer vietori sequence um, for the upper and lower cone. Maybe thicken a little bit so they become open, I don't know. You can take, for example, this piece and the, uh, it's not the right color, but this 
piece and this gives you an open cover and you write, can write down the naivatory sequence for that and that will give you a suspension isomorphism if you don't recall these from algebraic topology one. And for this, you don't need any niceness condition on the um, map from the base point to your space? Uh, I mean, that's why I define it as pointed can complexes because yes, you need that to be a co-fibration for these to work. That's called a well-pointed space, but since we're basically working with pointed CW complexes here, that's not going to be an issue. And if, you, if, you, if your point of space is not nice, you can replace it, for example, by taking the geometric realization of its thing. And we'll give you a weekly homotopy equivalent guy that is, uh, that, that is good enough. OK. Further questions? Hopefully this definition of cohomology theory is not too astonishing. Um, it's kind of minimalistic in the sense that we are giving the least possible amount of properties that we need to set up the theory. You can deduce all the properties you want from these two. It's a sort of a simplification of the allenberg steenrod axioms, if you've seen the allenberg steenrod axioms before. Uh, but if you haven't, uh, we're just going to take these as a, as a definition. You can actually play this game and, and see, for example, that you get along the, the Meyer Vietor sequence for, for an open cover. You can get everything out of this data. Okay. Good. Because our goal is to prove the following result. Well, that I'm going to keep it vague for now. We're going to prove a, a precise result before the end of the lecture, but the goal is for any cohomology theory, the upper star delta, there exists a sequence of spaces, of pointed spaces, sorry. Xm um, such that uh, En, oh, sorry, let me call them Yn. En of X is just as a set, this pointed homotopy classes of maps. That's the first version that I'm going to tell you of the Brown representability theorem. We're going to be more precise than that. We're going to want more structure in these spaces, but. Hmm. Okay. okay. So the main, uh, the main result here what I'm going to prove today is the following theorem. That's actually what's typically called the Brown representability theorem. Which is sort of representability. Sort of an unstable version of, uh, of the results above, but so let H space pointed greater or equal than zero side H space star be the subcategory of connected by which of course it's the same as path connected and etc because we're working with nice spaces spaces connected pointed spaces sorry that's also Then a functor f from h space greater or equal than zero up into set is representable, i.e., 
that exist y with the property as above if and only if it has the following two properties So one, for any collection X alpha of pointed connected spaces, the map F from the wedge to the product with a bijection okay and two for any push out square um, and again I mean a homotopy push out the map um, f of y prime into the pullback. I mean, we might want to ask that it's an isomorphism, but that's actually too much. It's not true for, for everything. But you want to ask that it's surjective. OK. Actually, let me. Put this here so you can see it better. Okay. So that's the statement. These are two properties. The first is fairly. Uh, sorry, did someone want to ask a question? Yeah, I wanted to ask a naive question about surjectivity. So does it have to do, the fact that we don't have bijection, does it have to do with the fact that we go into sets? Uh, yes and no. Uh, it has more to do with the fact that a homotopy push-out is not a push-out in the homotopy category. Um, so for example, Imagine that you have a you have a map if it's representable. Imagine you have a representable by actually let me we can call this y, I can call it z. Imagine you have a map from giving a map from y prime to z is not the same thing as it, so the if f were a representable functor, right? What the left hand side is the homotopy classes of maps from y prime to z, right? And the the right hand side instead is the uh, pairs of maps from y and x prime to z such that the composition is homotopic. But you actually know that a map from y prime to z is a pair of such maps plus a homotopy. So it's subjective because the fact that these two maps are homotopic means that a homotopy exists, but there be, might be more than one choice. So the map is not injective. So if you want, yeah, okay, great, the, thank the, you. The, the, the right hand side is the, the space. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Maybe I'll, I'll spell it out in, in words in the proof so I can write it down. But um, that, that shows that you cannot ask for bijectivity because homotopy push out has additional data, has also the data of the homotopy, uh, which the right hand side here ignores. Um, but the push out square here is a homotopy push out. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, I'm not going to repeat it every time, but uh, all limits and colimits here are going to be homotopy limits, homotopy colimits. Uh, well, this one is just a normal pullbacks because it's in sets and in sets homotopy pullbacks and pullbacks are the same. So you don't have to worry about that. 
uh, but in general, uh, I'm always going to assume that limits and colimits are homotopy. And I will very rarely be interested in no homotopy limits and colimits. Another small uh, question, sorry. So why is the greater or equal than zero in the symbol for oh, the connected spaces? Thank you for this question. This is an extremely important fact. Uh, it's a uh, remark. I want to spell it out. Uh, both pointedness and connectivity in the hypothesis are necessary. There are counterexamples of functors satisfying one and two that are not representable if you don't assume. For example, there, for example, there exists a functor uh, f from the homotopy category of pointed spaces up into set satisfying one and two, but not uh, but not representable. So that's not an optional part of the argument. Uh, essentially, the point is that pi zero is not agree. We will see that we're going to use the fact that a map in homotopy groups is injective when if and only if it has trivial kernel. But this is, of course, not true for pi zero, which is not a group. It can have trivial, the pre image of the base point might be a point, but the map might also not be injected from pi zero. Uh, the example is slightly elaborated. I wish I could give it to you. Uh, if I can find a simple way of constructing it, it's going to be a worked exercise in the exercise sheet. Um, but it depends on the existence of a group with a certain property. and. Uh, uh, well, uh, I'll see if I can give a, a reasonable construction of this group. Uh, OK, um, thanks. And that's very important. Oh, there are also counterexamples without pointedness. I thought they're easier to, to construct. So that's actually extremely important. And this is, fails exactly because pi 0 is not a group. That's exactly what's, what's going wrong in the proof. Uh, in fact, this theorem, and maybe I should mention it, is actually true much more generally. It's true whenever you have an infinity category, which is generated by a set of co-group objects. In this case, it will be our spheres Sn for n greater or equal than 1. Uh, but I decided for the purposes of this class to just present this special case. And so the general case, it is sometimes useful. So it's not general for generality's sake. Okay. So that's going to be the main theorem of this lecture. Uh, before I prove it, I would like to deduce from it uh, the promised classification of cohomology theories. which is very easy, but also uh, also it has a slightly subtle point to deal with this connectedness that we are, are forced to put in this theorem. So as a corollary, let E upper star delta be a cohomology theory. then there exists a unique uh, collection of pointed spaces en and in z and homotopy equivalences and equivalences 
yen and we need to call them delta n the loop of yen plus one such that there is an there are natural equivalences e n of x the same thing as homotopy classes of pointed maps from x to e n making the diagram commute the following diagram commute And let's see, uh, we can have uh, we have our D, which is an isomorphism here. And we have our isomorphisms with X EN. And here we have maps from sigma x em plus one. And remember, these, oh, pointed. Uh, let me move this to the right, actually. Remember these by the loop suspension at junction that I briefly mentioned last time is the same thing as homotopy classes of maps from x to omega of em plus one. And here we have the n, delta n gives equivalence. So the map delta, the, the, this map delta here is induced by these delta n's. And again, let me actually mention that these delta n's are part of the data. You kind of like discard them and hope to have a useful thing. You just cannot just ask them to exist, but without specifying them. These are the, the things that in the end you need to, to construct a boundary map in the long exact sequence of a pair. So they are, they are important information. Excuse me. Yes. Um, uh, you just said equivalences and natural equivalences. Oh, natural. Yeah. Okay. Here I can say natural isomorphism. If you oh. want, these are in the binary groups, but I mean natural in X. Okay. And the equivalences above are these weak homotopy or just homotopy equivalences? Uh, well. I mean, EN, when I say pointed space, sorry, I mean, I mean in this thing that's secretly N delta of can star. So they're, they're morally, I guess, ah. in classical terminology would say they are CW complexes. Uh, so there is no difference between the two notions. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, what do you mean by the uniqueness precisely? The standard uniqueness up to unique isomorphism? No, I mean uniqueness up to isomorphism, but the isomorphism is not going to be unique. Um, that's a subtle point I might discuss later. Um, uh, concretely, the, these objects EN and delta N are what we're going to call spectra. And the point is that the functor from spectra to uh, cohomology theories is full but not faithful. So if you have an isomorphism downstairs, you can lift it up out, upstairs, but maybe not in a unique way. Uh, it's a slightly subtle point. It goes under the name of phantom maps. Um, we might discuss them, or, or actually might put, maybe not this week, but next week in an, as an exercise to constructing a phantom map and see exactly what happens. A phantom map is a map of, of spectra. Well, I haven't defined spectra. A map of this, this data that induces the zero map of 
of cohomology theories, but which is not null homotopic. So these things exist as much as you might desire them not to. Such is life. Okay, let me get this corollary from the mean theorem. Unless there are other questions about the statement of the corollary. No, okay. This corollary also sometimes goes under the name of Brown representability theorem, by the way. Um, so it's slightly less general than that. So, um, okay, one direction I am actually going to leave as an exercise. We did most of the, the information last semester, actually, but uh, that such data, data determines uh, uh, cohomology theory is left as an exercise. I might say a couple of words about where the abelian group structure is coming from. But uh, for now, let me just do the other direction from a cohomology theory constructs such data. Okay. Uh, so the first step is to prove for every n that en restricted to connected pointed spaces is representable. Using the Brown representability theorem. So we, want, we don't want it to be representable for every space, but let us uh, first, let us first uh, show that it satisfies the hypothesis of the Brown representability theorem. So, okay, what were these hypotheses? Uh, where did I put them? Here. Okay, the first hypothesis is going to be obvious. So we have these sense wedges to products and we have this exactness hypothesis. So let's go back here. The hypothesis one uh, follows from the definition of a cohomology theory. Uh, and if you want the fact that products in abelian groups are the same thing as products in sets, that's okay. Um, okay, so the, the, the key point the key point is hypothesis two. And hypothesis two, well, uh, so we have a push out diagram. Uh, and uh, we want to show that en of e prime, en of y, sorry, en of y prime, en of y, en of x, en of uh, x prime is on two. That's our goal. So the first remark, uh, maybe I should have learned before that uh, the push out diagram, push out square star induces an equivalence between the mapping cones, the cofibers of F and the cofiber of F prime. 
But again, because uh, so is we, we also see these last semester, but let me recall how the proof works. Um, how does it work? Oh yeah, sorry. Uh, I should have come more prepared for this, but okay, doesn't matter. Uh, you can see the this square here. Is right? Yeah, I think I made this right. Um, oh yeah. No, oh, no, sorry, I'm doing it. I'm doing the pullback, not the push out statement. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry about that. Um, And you take the co-limit of this diagram. In the two directions. So if you take it first horizontal, first vertically and then horizontally, you get uh, No, uh, I'm sorry, I'm doing this wrong. Uh, let, let me step on, come for a minute. What do you want to say? Oh no, I'm sorry, this is, uh, this is a lot easier. Ah, uh, okay, uh, sorry. I was trying to prove a much stronger statement and I got confused. You just consider these two push out squares here. And then you take uh, the, the bigger square is also push out. So sorry about that. I was for one second, I got distracted and I was trying to prove a much stronger result, which we don't need. So if you got confused and you want to ask questions, that's the moment about this, that's the moment. Okay, so let me give a name to these uh, guys. So that's, sorry, we call them X, Y mod X and Y prime mod X prime. Let me make this small in a corner because I don't want to, to have it here. So now we can write the two long exact sequences. Um, we have E N Y prime mod X prime. This is going to be the long exact sequence for F prime, E n of Y prime, E n of X prime, and uh, E n minus one, uh, or minus one. Hmm. I think it's going to be E n plus one actually. Uh, I hope I'm not messing up the indices. It's not going to be important for the proof, but let me. Just hope I get this is E and Y over X. And we have a map of long exact sequences. And the point is that these vertical things here are isomorphisms. So in fact, you, you can you can get the uh, the subjectivity statement you're looking for from the snake lemma. 
but let me uh, let me do it by hand uh, just to to show you that this is not very magic. So this is we want in this square here that the map from a bottom left corner to the pullback is subjective. So what do we have? We have uh, alpha here and beta here and these. Sorry, this was f upper f prime upper star and f upper star, and we have that. Uh, Oh, and then I should call them maybe this G and G prime. This is G upper star, G prime upper star. And we have the G upper star of alpha is F upper star of beta. That's the condition of, I give you a point of this pullback. And I want to find gamma, such that F prime upper star of gamma is alpha and G prime upper star of gamma is beta. So how do we do that? Uh, well, the first observation, so here we have our delta. We have that. Um, wait. Oh yeah, the first observation, you can find delta of G upper star of alpha is the same thing as delta of F upper star of beta, which is zero. So going this way, you get zero. But going this way is the same thing as going this way. So, and since that map is an isomorphism, it isn't telling you the delta of alpha is zero. Uh, okay, then you can find gamma tilde such that alpha is F prime upper star of gamma tilde. Okay. Very good. Uh, that's almost what we not need. It's half of what we need. We also need the, the thing is going to be sent to beta. So uh, what we can find, well, we can consider beta minus G prime upper star of gamma tilde. We want this to be zero. It's not going to be zero. Let me call them beta zero in general, but we might be able to fix it. Because if you take F prime upper star of beta zero, that's F prime, uh, sorry, F upper star of beta zero, it's F upper star of beta minus F upper star of G prime upper star of gamma tilde, which is alpha minus G upper star F prime upper star of gamma tilde, uh, sorry, G upper star of alpha, uh, which is, uh, which is zero, as it should be. And then, okay, then beta zero is, so we have beta zero is delta, oh, and actually let me call them delta prime. Uh, just to, to make sure delta zero is delta of some, uh, what am I going to call this? Epsilon. But epsilon, you know, remember, you can lift it upstairs, since that is also an isomorphism. And so you can take gamma is uh, gamma tilde plus delta prime epsilon, and this works. You can check it has all the properties that you want. Uh, this is just a standard diagram chasing. You've probably seen it uh, a billion times, but I like to be explicit from time to time. So, great. We can apply brown representability. And so we can find, 
Zn tilde, and you'll see one second why I'm calling them Zn tilde, such that for every x pointed connected space, En of x is Zn. Okay, that's great. That's almost where we want to be, except that uh, we would like this to be true for all, uh, all x. But okay, this is here is now we can use can use the following observation. If x is any pointed space then sigma x is connected. That, uh, well, the point is that even if you have uh, two connected components in the suspension, you're going to get this. And I'm pretty sure we mentioned it last semester because I make sure of it because I knew that I was going to need it. Uh, but if you, if you, you don't remember it, I suggest you can see it, for example, as a consequence of Blaker's Messi. Uh, although that's way overkill uh, for this simple statement. <laughs> or you can just draw the picture and see that indeed it, it works. Every point has a path to the base point because it's a suspension and we are putting it by hand. So we have En of x is isomorphic naturally by delta to En plus one of sigma of x, which is isomorphic, sorry, to pointed classes of map from Ex to Zn tilde. But now we can use the loop suspension adjunction and this is isomorphic to pointed classes of map omega Zn. And now, well, now we are done. Now we can just let En, the space En, to be omega Zn tilde. So remember, our Zn tilde actually were built so that they were always connected, because they were built in the category of connected spaces. Uh, but the representing space in general, of course, won't be. But that's not a problem, because the loop space of a connected space can be whatever as we will see. Okay, not whatever, but as we will see, it can definitely not be not connected. Particular, well, okay, I could give an example with ordinary cohomology. Okay. And now we have as before, EN plus one sigma X is going to be maps from X to Omega EM plus one. And so by the, the, the natural isomorphism EM EM plus one sigma comes from uh, delta. Oh, sorry, you called it delta N. by unida. This ends up the proof of the corollary. Okay, are there questions? No. So we have still roughly half an hour. Uh, not sure if I can do the proof of the urban representability theorem in half an hour without, I mean, I can, but I'm not sure if, I, if it could be a good idea. Um, so <clears throat> let's see.
I might defer the proof to next time and instead draw some more definitions out of, out of uh, this. If you think it would be better, if you agree with it. But first, do you have any questions? Um, yes, you wanted to say something about uh, getting the abelian group structure when you... All oh, right, since I have time, I might as well say that. So yeah, let me give you a definition first, and then I'll, I'll say how you get the group structure. The definition, uh, spectrum is the datum of a collection of spaces en for each integer n and equivalences delta n from en to the loop space or pointed spaces sorry that's very important and i was forgetting So this, the Brown representability theorem is essentially saying that every cohomology theory is associated to a spectrum. Um, I'm going to call us, we're going to call this, sometimes we're going to call the spectrum E. And just to be clear, sometimes I'm just going to define EN for N sufficiently big. EN for say N greater or equal than some big N and then let, uh, I don't know, EI to be just uh, what do I need? N minus I for every E less than N. Since uh, everything is supposed to be equivalent to the loops of, uh, of its, the next space. If I define only from from some space further, uh, it's not. I mean, it still determines the whole sequence. It actually matters only what happens for very big n. Uh, the smaller guys are are sort of determined by that. Okay. So now let me tell you how you get a cohomology theory out of a spectrum. <clears throat> so from a spectrum, we want to get a cohomology theory. And as I said, this is not going to be quite a bijection. And in fact, we will see spectra are much better behaved objects of homology than, than homology theories. Um, so we are actually going to work with spectra throughout this course. So what's the idea? Well, the idea is you define EN of, uh, of X just pointed maps, pointed classes of maps, which if you want, I can write this as pi zero of maps, of pointed maps, sorry, from X to EN. And by point map star, I mean, if you want map space star, maps in, map in space in this infinity category space star, which I defined. Uh, okay, well, we certainly have a, a suspension isomorphism. Uh, 
by the loop suspension adjunction using delta m. Uh, but as you were noticing, this a priori is just a set. Uh, in fact, in the exercise sheet, there's going to be an exercise asking you to prove that in the definition of cohomology theory, you can just put set. Uh, if, you, if you say it in exactly the right way, the abelian group structure is, is automatic. But uh, rather than do the exercise for you here, I'm going to tell you how from a, from a spectrum, uh, you automatically get something that's valid in abelian groups. And the trick is, well, I said En of x is pi zero of maps, pointed maps, sorry, from x to En. But that's, for example, pi zero of pointed maps from x to, I don't know, loop squares of x n plus two. And now loops being a co-limit or you know, just the definition of mapping spaces, you can move it out. And that's pi two of maps e plus two. And these gives an abelian group structure. To En of X, that's natural in N. And it, in fact, if you unwrap also the suspension isomorphism is going to be an isomorphism of abelian groups. If you unwrap what it means. That's because pi two is an abelian group by the Ekman-Newton argument. And the, the exactness, okay, the, the axiom one, the product axiom is just the universal property of of co-product, no? And then axiom two is exactness for Pupe sequences for any T, X, T, sorry, X double prime T, X, T, X prime T is an exact sequence of pointed sets. which if I recall correctly was an exercise last semester. Could I have a question? Sure. Uh, so in the definition of abelian group, you could use higher pi i? Yes. And, also, and probably this gives the same answer, but something has to be checked, right? Yeah, you can, you can check, but that's essentially because how you define the suspension of isomorphism, everything commutes, everything that has to commute commutes. Uh, uh, I mean, it's the Ekman-Hilton argument, so the Ekman-Hilton argument uh, that we saw last semester shows that pi n omega x equivalent pi n plus one of x is an isomorphism of groups for n greater or equal than one. So you have two group structures on the on, on this well on this group and they are and, and the naturality of the group structure uh, of Pn forces the two group structures to commit to each other and then the Ekman Hilton argument tells you that the two group structures then are the same and in fact are abelian. Um, and that's what you have to check. Whatever. That's on some level, this has nothing to do with cohomology theories. This is just a property of higher homotopy groups and loop spaces. 
because right the, the group operation here if you remember is given by composition mm -hmm. horizontally yeah. okay. and here uh, sorry vertically and this is somehow given by composition horizontally but you can move rotate them around mm -hmm. so to speak okay thank you Okay, so this is how you go from spectra to cohomology theories and vice versa. And actually, since we are here at this point, I'm going to give definition infinity category of spectra. It's just the limit. Of omega of this tower. So Concretely, objects are sequences E n delta n oh, sorry, I got E n plus one. And here actually I'm specifying them only for n greater or equal than zero, but for what I discussed, that's not a, a, a real limitation, since you can always extend it in a canonical way to all integers um, and maps. Uh, so map from E to F spectra is the limit map E N F N in, in pointed spaces I E a map is F N and for every N and and this is important is very important. We're talking about homotopy limits here. So we give a, a homotopy here. Homotopy that I don't know, let me call it HM. And this homotopy is part of the data of the map of spectra. And you can actually see that if you do a map of cohomology theories, you are still giving these FNs, but then you're just asking that this square commutes up to homotopy and you're not giving the homotopy. That's exactly why the, the map from spectra to cohomology theories is not full, because we are forgetting data and this data is important. And I, I really hope that by the end of this class, every time someone writes a commutative diagram and doesn't, you, you feel uncomfortable if they discard the coherences uh, because they're really, really important. And you, you do get big problems if you don't remember them. Okay. So this was essentially to define also what a map of spectra is. But since we are at it, I defined the, the whole infinity category because why not? And sorry, this maybe I should have said what the map here was. But the map is just taking the loops of the maps. And then and, 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 and landing, okay, this is technically a map from map omega EM plus one to omega FM plus one, but you can use delta to identify them. So such an identification is exactly the datum of such a diagram. Um, are all inverse limits in cut infinity um, computed on the level of simplicial sets? Co-filtered ones. Are oh, co-filtered, yeah. Okay. No, but actually, no, actually, no, 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 no. You, you're actually, I'm actually slightly cheating because a, a point in this limit is not just a, a limit in sequential sets because you need also these maps to be vibrations, which they are not. Yeah. So what I'm saying, a point in this limit is a point at, in each of these stages plus a path from the image of the point to the next one. And this square is exactly such a path. Uh-huh. 
oh sorry, or, or if you want this delta is such a path. And when, when I say path, I actually mean equivalence, sorry. Uh, under the identification of can complexes and Okay, so so having these deltas makes up for th the fact that the omegas are no fibrations. So. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Okay, thanks. This is similar to how you define the homotopy fiber, which is also an example of a homotopy limit. Are there questions about this? Um, are we going to use uh, the higher simplices of this infinity category or are we just content with objects and maps? I mean, we are going to use at the very least homotopies, which you don't need to, to uh, I mean, if, you, if you're uncomfortable because uh, you are, uh, you're afraid of not being able to define these things, uh, let me write what a homotopy of these things is for you. Uh, just for, for these ones. So a homotopy between two, the, two of these yes. things is going to be a collection of homotopies, I'm going to call Kn from Fn to Fn prime. And then, well, uh, well, okay, let me write it like this. And then you have to extend uh, no, sorry. And you have an H and tilde such that H and T. So this is Kn, this is omega Kn plus one, and this is H, H and tilde extending Hn in the sense that when you and the HN prime. And since if I restrict it to EN times zero and EN times one, this gives you the, the, the two homotopies. I could make it, I could make a formal proof of this, but I don't know if it's worth it. It's essentially a path in the limit, is a limit, is a path at every point here, plus a homotopy of paths for every map in the, in the diagram. But okay, I'm not. I'm never going to use the ex this explicit formula. That's never going to happen. I'm going to use so that I'm going to be able to compute homotopy limits and homotopy limits in spectra. So I'm using the existence of these higher simplices implicitly. But I'm not going to use what shape they have. Does this make sense? And I'm, and I'm always going to use tricks to reduce to the computation of homotopy limits and colimits in spaces. Uh, that's in fact a big part of what next lecture is going to be about, uh, to show how you can use those tricks to uh, never having to think of complicated diagrams. Just the complicated diagrams exist, you're happy that they exist, but you try to touch them as little as possible. <laughs> I don't know if that was a satisfactory answer. And I mean, actually I can, I, actually why, why can't I give you the higher simplices? So let me give an N simplex in map spectra E to F is just, let me say an F from E times, sorry, E, oof, no, an M simplex, sorry, I have too many M, to F N and uh,
Oh, sorry, this was actually silly. I want homotopies relative to the base point, so I have to do this. Okay, uh, is this a, is this concrete answer? Because an M simplex here spectra EF is an M simplex in math pointed spaces E M F N plus and actually, I don't know why I put the geometric realization since I told you I was working with. Oh, because I didn't want to define what the loop of a non can complex is. Um, let's see. Uh, plus a path like this, plus a, a path simplex sigma n. Uh, between omega, sigma, and uh, n plus one, and sigma n in, in map delta n space e n. Um, okay. That's just how you, you compute the homotopy limit. Actually, I probably should have given this formula for the homotopy limit of a tower uh, last week, but we were already doing plenty of technical things. Is this, um, is this a sufficient answer? Yeah, okay. Yeah. Um you you just talked about the explicit formula for um, like sequential co-limits. Um, you you could just put it in the script and we can read it there or just give a reference. Yeah yeah I'm going to put it in in in, in the notes. Sorry I'm uh, terribly behind in writing the notes, but okay let me actually say let me actually write it in this. This is going to appear. And let me just write it this formula. Um, uh, I'll actually have to think about a reference because this is one of those things that everyone knows but no one writes. Uh, but a limited a point and then simplex and simplex in lin n x n is an n is collection n and gamma ends paths from so if you have a tower say f n where you get p n x n plus one etc um p f This one in from delta n x n action. Yeah, let me write it down. Actually, let me write it down. If we have a tower, tower of spaces. Then an n simplex in the homotopy limit is such a thing. And uh, uh, I mean, I could put a reference, but I'm not sure. Well, OK. I'll try to find a reference that spells it out. It is a consequence of a bunch of standard facts that I didn't want to, to explain. But it's a consequence of the fact that the tower is a free category on a graph. 
and that limits on free categories over graphs are simpler to describe. I'll try to find, can find a reference that, uh, uh, that spells this out explicitly. Okay, thank you. Uh, other questions? If there are no other questions, I think I'll stop the recording and next week we will prove the Brown representability theorem and uh, do some stuff about spectra. If sounds good. Okay, let me stop the recording.